Hi everyone. I just want to share this short little video with you today uh, just as a way to explain a few things about gel phase in soap making, particularly cold process soap making. So I actually filmed this um, bit of video a couple of weeks ago when I was filming my coconut and rice bran oil laundry soap recipe video. You'll see that it's from that day. Um, and I basically just show you what the gel phase looks like. It's a really good example of that. Uh, why you might want to consider gelling your soap, some of the benefits of it. Also what makes the gelling of the soap go faster or slower or longer or shorter because there are some different things in soap recipes that can impact the way soap gels. Uh, and also the impact of the amount of water in your soap recipe on the gel phase in soap making. So I'll go through those and I'll come back again at the end and maybe add a couple of other bits as well. Hi everyone, I want to do this quick little video just to talk to you about gelling your soap. Um, some of you might have seen this. This is my um, coconut and rice bran oil laundry soap recipe. I'm actually in the middle of that video but this is a great opportunity to talk to you about gelling. See how this soap in the middle, this was poured about 20 minutes ago, it's 50% coconut oil which saponifies very fast. This soap is going through a gel phase. When I first poured it, it all looked creamy and white and opaque like it still does on the edges. But since I poured it, the saponification reaction generates heat which forces the soap batter. If it's warm enough and in slab molds they they nearly always warm because all of the soap is held together and heat can't escape so much, which is why it's gelling from the inside and moving to the edges. When a soap gels like this, this is a really good thing, I think, uh, for a few reasons. Number one, if you are using natural colorants in your soap making, well, and lots of other colors as well, but particularly natural colorants, if you gel your soap, it will make the colors much more vibrant, which is a good thing. The other thing too is, um, and Kevin Dunn in his book, Scientific Soap Making, I'll put a link for that in the description box, have done tests and soap that has been gelled or melted, as he says in his book, I just say gelled, does not absorb as much water when you use it in the shower or the bath. So it lasts longer. So gelling your soap will actually make a better quality soap as well as making your colors much more vibrant. Um, I don't want to leave the lid off of this for too long because I want this to stay warm. If you let your soap cool down too much, it won't gel all the way to the edges. And sometimes you can see, you know, when you make log soaps, um, soaps in a log mold, you'll see that round gelling you know it's a different color in the middle and that's because you've got like a partial gel and it hasn't quite had enough heat retained for the gel to go all the way to the edges. I want this to go all the way to the edges so I'm going to cover this up again now but I just thought this was a nice opportunity to show you a good example of uh, a soap going through a gel phase. So gel your soaps people if you want to. You've got Sometimes you've got to wrap them up it does depend on the recipe. If you've got lots of coconut oil or other oils or fats or butters that saponify very rapidly, or if your batter is very warm, or if you've added lots of sugars to your batch, that's going to accelerate it. And you've got to be careful. You don't want your soap to get too hot when it's gelling. Managing the heat temperature, the heat level so that it does gel fully, but not so much that a volcanoes, um, that's a problem. When you vol when it volcanoes, you might get some cracks. If it really volcanoes, the soap will actually cook up like, a, like it does in a hot process soap recipe. Um, but yeah, if it overheats, you can get cracking, but just the right amount of heat. It is a bit of a trial and error thing. It really depends on the recipe. I know this recipe, this one here is 50% coconut oil and I knew it was going to gel fast so I'm keeping this timber lid on and just a light tea towel but as soon as I see that gel all the way to the ends which it's nearly there I'll, um, I'll let it cool down. You, you would not want to put this in the oven or you would not want to wrap this soap up in a really warm blanket like a woolen blanket or anything like that. You just want to lightly wrap a coconut oil based soap because they do gel really rapidly. I'm back again, it's a little bit later. I just wanted to show you this soap. 
if you've seen my laundry soap video you will have already seen this but um, the soap is pretty much fully gelled now and I wanted to add that um, there's another thing that impacts um, how a soap gels and that is the water amount very low water soap recipes gel have a very small window of their gel phase uh, and it happens quite quickly so if they're not kept warm enough it won't gel fully um, but if you've got a high water soap they tend to gel over a much longer period of time and they do gel more fully so bear that in mind as well if you're using really low water soap recipes you need to insulate them um, a bit longer to make sure that they gel fully because their gel phase is, is just a bit more rapid and fleeting. So gelling your soap really does depend a lot on the oils that you're using. If you're using lots of uh, saturated fats and oils in your soap making recipes that trace and saponify really fast, they're generally going to uh, be hotter as they saponify. And remember the saponification reaction in soap making, it's an exothermic reaction, which means um, when the lye and the oils are emulsified and they start to saponify, that chemical reaction itself generates its own heat. So you, you've got to think about how much heat your particular soap recipe is likely to generate. Also, the molds that you use is quite important too. If you're putting your, your soap into individual silicon molds or really um, thin flat slab molds or some kind of mold where it's not going to hold a lot of heat in, then you uh, might not get a gel phase in your soap. In situations like that, you might want to do what we call like forcing the gel. There are different methods like CPOP, which stands for cold process, oven process method, where you can put your soap into a warm oven after you've molded it to force the gel. Uh, there is so much in this though. I do have some, <laughs> there's the rubbish truck. <laughs> As I was saying, there is a lot in this subject and I really encourage you to have a Google and read some online articles. I'm going to do a blog post to accompany this video on my website and I will link that below. The main thing is really heat. So if you don't want your soaps to gel, you need to keep everything pretty cool and I wouldn't use um, big slab molds or log molds. If you really don't want gelled soap, consider using individual silicon molds or consider using um, not very thick log molds, so a, a thinner material that doesn't insulate very well. You know, you wouldn't want to use a thick timber mold um, because the timber is going to insulate the soap and it's going to help to help it to keep warm. Some soap makers put their logs of soap in the freezer as soon as they poured it to try and keep it as cool as possible to prevent the gel. And there are some soap makers who don't like gelled soap at all. They much prefer the creamy, opaque, um, the pale colour of ungelled soap, uh, particularly if you're using milks, like a lot of goat's milk soap makers will prevent gelling in their soap because milk has a lot of sugar in it. It does get quite hot when it saponifies and that can scorch the milk in the soap and make the milk soap more of a brownie colour than rather than a nice white creamy colour. But just remember that gelled soap does last a bit longer. It doesn't absorb water and expand uh, as much when it gets wet as gelled as ungelled soap does. So ungelled soap when it gets wet in the shower when people are using it, it's going to take on a bit more water and therefore it's going to Got be used a bit faster gelled soap does stay a bit harder so and I have found that in my experience with the soaps that I make so it depends on the soaps you're making too you know if you like me and you like lots of soft oil soaps particularly olive oil soap that I love um, you know a hundred percent olive oil soap like a Castile soap you really want to gel that you want to make it as hard as you possibly can and putting it through a nice hot gel phase will really harden that up um, even more than it would be if you didn't gel it. So that's something good to know. 
So make sure you check out the blog post accompanying this video. I will put all of the points that I can possibly think of uh, about gelling and what's good to know in that. And please let me know if you've got any questions and I'll see you in the next video. I've got a, a cool little recipe video coming up next. So we'll see you for that one in a week or two. Bye everyone.